Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to look at subgigahertz brute force attack with the Flipper Zero. We have a Genie Garage door that uses a 64-bit dynamic code. This attack's been running for 75 minutes, sending about three codes a second. I'll start with some background info and then I'll show you how to update the code. Let's get started. This video is for educational purposes only. Only test on your own hardware. And I recommend buying a separate receiver instead of testing on a device you rely on. Don't forget to join my Discord for giveaways. I'm giving away various hardware, but I'll also be giving away unique Genie codes. So a brute force attack is really simple. We just try each number until it works. We don't have to try our guesses in any particular order, but adding one is what a lot of people do. In this particular lock, each wheel is 10 digits, so adding a wheel makes it 10 times as many possible codes. Each bit is two combinations, so it's twice as many codes. Still, that doubling can add up, so a 32-bit code versus a 12-bit code has a million times more combinations. So as I mentioned before, when brute forcing codes, we don't have to increment our last guess by one. Consider a scenario where 42, 152, or 315 was the next accepted code. If we increment by one, we'd have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until we got to that 42. But instead, if we increment by 19, we'd have 0, 19, 38, until we got to 152, which would only be nine guesses instead of 43 guesses. So this graph shows how many guesses based on increments. You can see 19 was the best. It took the fewest number of guesses most of the time. Uh, one wasn't that far behind. Uh, three was pretty bad, and 27 was like almost twice as bad as incrementing by one. So here's a pie chart of all the codes and how long it would take to guess the code. You can see an overwhelming percentage take more than a year to guess the code. I blew up this little sliver into a second pie chart, and you can see a little narrow slice here is under eight hours. Here's another view of that same data. The one I tested in the video was this 12,978 attempts. At 2.87 attempts, it took us just over 75 minutes. Had I done the maximum, it would have been 4 billion and 44 years. If you're looking for something that takes about a day, that would be about 0.1% of the codes. So you have a one in a thousand chance. If you're willing to go for a month, then you get about 1% of the codes. But on average, half of the codes take five years or longer to crack. I encourage you to watch my other videos on Genie and Keylock that go into depth on the topic. But basically what happened was our remote sent this code and then we saw that the end was fixed, but that middle part is changing. So we just keep adding one to that middle part and we just keep adding and adding and adding until we've added it 12,978 times. And at that point, we found this code that was down here on the 15th code. Had we accidentally sent one of these lower codes, which is 16,000 of those codes, then this range would have been reduced to only these next three being valid. But we got lucky here, and it only took 75 minutes to go through and add all those codes to find the next code. So 92. 5413F was the code we needed. Here's a different example where the remote sent this code and then eventually it sent a future code. So when it sent this future code here, the 6D656C59, then only the next three codes were valid or we had to send a code that was in the next three of that. And we did eventually send out, which was 6D671678. And so that is within three. And so that's what caused our door to open. The difference between that first code and that last code we sent was this huge hex number, which is 62 million, which would take 250 days at our rate of 2.87 guesses. Either technique will open the door and one's not necessarily faster than the other. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio Code. I've cloned the Unleashed firmware recursively. And then in Application Users, I've put the Subroot project, which I copied from this GitHub address. If you're not sure how to do all that, make sure you watch my other video, Flipper Zero Windows Development Environment. 
and it'll walk you through all the steps. And if you still have questions, reach out on Discord. I had a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but I think it's good to point out again that this software is also for experimental purposes only and is not meant for any illegal activities. Please only test on devices you own. So next in the Unleashed firmware, we're gonna go into lib and then we'll scroll down and open sub gigahertz and then inside of there protocols and then inside of there is keylock.c. Depending on the device you're communicating with, you may need to change your TE short, TE long, and delta. For example, on a Genie, you'd have all these numbers. You can watch my Genie video for more information about that. And then next we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna change this type from dynamic to static. And when we do that, it is gonna break the ability for key lock to send the next codes in a normal thing but it's gonna help our brute forcer be able to send the brute force code that it would like to send. And then finally, we have to make one more small change, which is here in this keylock gen data method, we wanna set that counter up parameter that gets sent, that third parameter, bool counter up. We wanna say counter up equals false semicolon. And that's gonna ensure that the counter never changes. Again, this is gonna to totally break sending regular key lock codes, but since we're doing a brute force attack right now and our flipper's gonna be busy for a month, we're probably fine with that. Make sure your flipper's plugged in, control shift B, and then do flash USB with resources. And then that's gonna take a while while it rebuilds everything and then redeploys the new firmware onto your flipper zero. If everything's successful, you should see this firmware updated message. And then when you click OK, you'll see a link to their Discord server and a link to their GitHub and then the desktop. Go ahead and click OK and then go into that sub gigahertz option. And then go into the read option. Click the left button and make sure the frequency is set to the frequency of remote. For example, 315 megahertz, 390 megahertz. And then now we're reading. So go ahead and on your remote control, press the button on the remote and hopefully your flipper will decode the signal. And then we can go ahead and click OK to get the details. And you're going to want to write down this key. 8048-5222. And then the fixed part is 007F1991. We're going to open subroot underscore protocols dot h and then at the top of this enum the very first enum we're going to add a new entry and that's going to be key lock file protocol and that should go right above came file protocol and then we can scroll down and in the second enum we're going to add a new entry as well and it's sub brute attack key lock 64 bit and the frequency is 315, so 315 megahertz. Next, we'll open subroot underscore protocols dot C. And we'll go ahead and copy this first const block uh, that's defining the came 12 bit. And then we'll change it to be subroot protocol key lock 64 bit 315. And then we'll change that frequency to 315.000000. We'll change our bits to 64. And then on file, we'll change this file from came file protocol to be key lock file protocol. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll scroll down the page quite a bit, probably about halfway here to about line 400, 417, I guess it is. And we'll add a new entry, subroot attack key lock 64 bit 315. And then we'll change the display text to be key lock 64 bit and 315 MHC. And then we can go ahead and scroll down further. And these presets are okay. And then in the registry section, we're gonna add a new entry. And so that's subroot attack 
key lock 64 bit 315 and it equals ampersand subroot underscore protocol underscore key lock 64 bit 315 comma and then we can scroll down to the next section here okay and this will put bracket key lock file protocol equals quote key lock and actually we need to make sure we spell it correctly capital k lowercase ee -E, capital l lowercase oq key lock um, and then i'll go ahead and add a comment just so that we're really explicit that in key lock it's capital k and capital l and all the rest of the letters must be lowercase or else this will not work okay and then scroll down and there's just one more section we need to change which is inside of this subroot protocol create candidate for default we need to add a new if statement so we're going to say if file equal equal key lock file protocol and then do all this code in brackets else and then our other code so now we have the un 64t and it's technically not the hop but it's the the portion that's changing uh, the hop technically is inverted uh, the bits from left to right instead of uh, right to left but it, it really doesn't matter for the purposes here so our hop we're going to just set to that first part of our key and then our fix we're going to set to the last part of our key make sure you put the zero x in front so that the computer knows it's hexadecimal and then next we want to take that hop value and do a plus equal with the step and so that'll take that hop and increment it by however much our step and our step's going to start off with zero and then it's going to go one two three so that's that thing we see uh, during the brute force and so we want to basically increment the hop by that step that's how we're actually doing our brute force attack and then next we want to figure out our total which is total equals hop shifted left 32 bits or our fix so that looks good and now we need to make the data um, and so we can just grab this code down here and paste it in so it's a for loop that's going to iterate over those eight bytes and for each of those it's going to set our p of i data okay control shift b and then launch app on flipper and that'll take a little bit to compile the first time you've run it and then it should upload it to the flipper and hopefully you see a key lock 64 bit 315 megahertz option click ok to go into it and then click ok again to start brute forcing okay at this point it's sending out those codes and at some point hopefully the receiver will match the code and the door will open so let's go ahead and grab the beginning of that code and we'll search for it in our file and it's code 3403 and you can see that code 3405 is almost the same let me bring up the calculator and we'll flip it into programmer mode so that we have hexadecimal 8097 AC82 8048522 equals in decimal 5.2 million. We'll divide that by our rate of 2.87 a second. Divide that by 60 seconds, that's minutes. Divide that by 60 that's hours divide that by 24 that's days so 21 days we should have an open well that's a lot better than the average of five years so i'll take it so while a brute force attack is typically not practical against a 64-bit key it is possible and hopefully now you know how to implement such attack on your flipper zero please like and subscribe and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my Discord server. There's an invite in the description or in the comments below.